Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review. And today I'm going to be reviewing Confronting Magic by Steve Cohen. Before we do that, can you please like and subscribe? Check out cardmagiccourse.com. That's my online card magic course, and you'll be very familiar with that if you've been watching a lot of these. Many of you are members, and go and see what all the fuss is about. Don't take my word for it. There's loads of testimonials from existing members and famous magicians on the page, all saying how wonderful my course is. Isn't that lovely? But go and have a look for yourself. Cardmagiccourse.com if you want a little taster, actually a big taster, uh, a free course on the most powerful uh, card move in card magic easy for me to say uh, go and check out my course on the spread cull it's an incredible move and you get a whole course on it you'll be able to nail the move after that with a bit of time and that's cardmagiccourse.com forward slash cull c-u-l-l so another book by steve cohen and I, I, I was really excited about this because Steve isn't the sort of person that puts out loads of lecture notes and books and things like that. He's someone that works. He, he works and he does a very cool show, uh, a parlor show in New York off Broadway. And he has done for 20 years, 17 of which in the, uh, in the Waldorf Astoria. So he, he performs for VIPs, for paying audiences to sell out uh, rooms consistently. So when someone like that writes a book, I'm going to read it because what he's doing is what I wanted to do and what I want to do and what I do do. I don't do that, but I perform for lay people. That's, that's what many of us do. So I always feel like he's got something to say. Uh, if you haven't seen his stuff, give it a Google, watch his Letterman clip on, um, on YouTube. Just Google it and you'll find it and you'll get an idea of the kind of stuff. It's classic magic, again, which I'm a huge fan of. And what's lovely is to see how well it goes down for modern audiences and how hungry they are for classic magic. So the book is mainly it, is in three different parts. Now I'll say it's written for lay people, but it's, there's a lot in here for magicians, if you ask me. Um, after the introduction, incidentally by Guillermo del Toro, who is himself an absolute genius and has a very good eye for magic, but without being a magician, what better person um, and what a great <laughs> what a great person to write you forward. Uh, and then introduction from Steve, just talking about what Chamber Magic is. That's the name of his show. And then part one is an origin story talking about the, the show itself and the genesis of the show. Part two is, is actually about Max Molini. Again, loads of magicians in there. Part three is his Tales from a Millionaire's Magician, just anecdotes and different things that have happened to him. Uh, and then we've got the epilogue of him going forward and saying that he's still hungry for learning and researching. And I'll just break those down. I'm not going to go into loads of detail because I think it's a, it's a book you should read for a couple of reasons. Again, like I said, it's written by someone who knows. It's just a joy to read because it's utterly stunning. And I say this about a lot of books, but blimey, look at that. This is the sort of book, I put that, I'll get it away from my face so it focuses in. I put that on Facebook and non-magicians, more than magicians were saying, I want to read that. That just looks amazing to read. And it is. It's a book of colour, of class. It just, look, the colours just jump out. The photos are incredible. Uh, everything about it is published by Asseline, uh, who they're not magic publishers. They publish beautiful books. That's what they do. You look on their site and it's just if you're a book person like me, you'll just want all of them. And some of them are like a grand. This isn't, thankfully. So the first thing you notice are the photos and mostly people's responses to the magic, which is what he talks about. You know, it's it's that sort of the, all that that kind of gut punch moment. I'm looking at them now and they're just wonderful. And I looked at these photos, not in a way I usually do. I usually kind of look at photos and go, great. I'm not kind of the sort of person that walks around a gallery and spends three hours looking at a picture. Though I'm trying to be, because I think there's probably something in it. <laughs> and people seem to like it, don't they? Um, but with these, I really, because I think because I'm a magician, but just looking at, at that moment where they get that, kind of where, where everything kind of drops away and they're just children, really. They're just, they just have that wonder. And these photos are some of the best photos I've seen that capture that moment and remind us why we're doing what we do. And again, it's thinker drink, it's card tricks, it's tricks that we know because they're classics. His, you know, his inspiration was Hofzinser and Malini and the next chapter, and, and well, before we go into the next chapter, so this, or, the origin of the, of the Chamber Magic story is something that he did talk about in of his show, he talked about in the Vanishing Ink Astonishing Essays, but I loved reading about it and I loved the fact it was written for lay people. To me, it was almost better to read that. 
and it's a story of resilience, it's a story of persistence, it's a story of someone that just loved magic and needed to do that, even though it was a riskier route to take, and his dad's saying, no, you've got to get a job, and that was like red rag to a bullet, so, well, now you've said that, this is going to work. And um, for someone like me who, who, who or us, like many of us, who are performing for lay people, that's what we do, not necessarily if it's a job, but just that we feel that need to do it regardless of what people say, I think it's an important and very inspiring story to read, and I absolutely loved it. Chapter two is about Max Molini, which again, you know, lessons from Max Molini. And this is why I say there's a lot for magicians in here, because, you know, all the little things like, you know, wait a week for that moment. You know, I think about doing the top change or something like that, you know, wait for the moment, wait, you know, even if you have to be really patient when it really, really hits hard or the moment of magic, you know, don't rush into it. You know, concentrate on showmanship. You know, be bold. You know, it's stuff we kind of hear before, but uh, hear a lot. But when we read it and really think about it, that's not an easy thing to do. And I and I love the fact that he's he's drawing all these lessons from the past into a show, which I say is so powerful for for paying audiences now. And then the 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 next chapter is true tales from a millionaire magician, and this is anecdotes, stories, things about his show, things that have happened to him. There's a chapter on think a drink. This is his famous trick that he's known for. And the fact that he he got hold of the original thinker drink prop from David Devant and kind of there's this lovely photo, you see the two photos, one of David Devant holding it and him holding exactly the same prop. And, and I kind of got, well, I mean, I'm not what somebody that, that kind of collects those kind of old things, but I kind of got it when I saw that. He's got uh, loads of stories about performing for celebrities and, and, and you know, in, in other people's hands that would have been or felt a bit boasty, I think, sometimes, but it didn't. It felt like someone who was going, look how hard I've worked, I still love this, and isn't this cool this thing happened? It wasn't done in that kind of, like, hey, I was hanging out with, it was, you know, the Warren Buffett story, him, you know, talking about he's, <laughs> he's going to do finger drink, and they say, right, that carpet's worth this much, and it's white, so do you really want to do that? And he's like, all right, and he had to change things up. And performing at Carnegie Hall, and the, the, the nerves he's experiencing when he's doing that, and again, I, it, it's nice to hear this, you know, we see these people perform and we kind of sometimes forget that it's a really nerve-wracking, uncomfortable experience to kind of put yourself out there and be in the arena and take those risks. And going on Letterman, you know, he talks about the kind of awkwardness of having to go on a, a, a show and, you know, be quite directive about, no, you don't want the cameras here, we need to do it this way. And, it, you know, and I think that's important as someone that kind of, I would concede too much to please other people of going, no, you, you need to kind of, we need to have a quality of what we do and actually stand up for that, stand up for the best way of, of performing magic. And all these little snippets of things that I, that kind of made me feel, yeah, this is again, written by someone who knows. And I loved his stuff about the, the Indian rope trick, going out to India and filming something of um, this, the way he describes that the kind of crowd uh, around the, the magician there performing the Indian rope trick and him performing the bullet catch. And I just, I just really, really liked sitting in the company of Steve and those stories. And for me, again, like the pictures and like the word, everything, what, there was a real kind of pride about what he does. It's kind of, look what I've achieved. Again, not in a boastful way. And, and also look what you can achieve. And again, not explicit, explicitly saying that, but that kind of, this is a kind of experience that I, uh, the, in, uh, inspiration that I really need to to listen to the stories of someone who's lived it and done it and isn't just sitting in their room kind of waxing lyrical about the kind of moves you should do in certain situations having never tried them and I'm not you know we do get quite a lot of that in this community um, but a lovely community it is as well and then the the next bit is the, the learning new tricks he's talking about how he's he's uh, constantly trying to still develop still learn and again you get this real joy of of, of magic, which is which is kind of communicated through the whole thing. So, as you can guess, I really, really like it. Um, I don't think Steve would ever bring anything out I don't like it that isn't really classy and really cool, because that's kind of what he does. It's not full of magic tricks, it's not a magic book in that way, but I think read between the lines, and you like reading a good book about magic, I think you'll really, really enjoy it, and, it, and it's utterly stunning as well. Uh, so I really liked it. Thank you, Steve, for sending that to me. It's available on chambermagic.com forward slash store chambermagic.com forward slash store and please uh, do all the good stuff like subscribe check out cardmagiccourse.com and get your free spread cold course a whole course on the spread cold one of the best moves in card magic most powerful moves in card magic cardmagiccourse.com forward slash cull c-u-l-l -L. thank you very much have a great one take care stay safe cheers